Are you looking for a backup solution for your WordPress site, your PHP site, your VPS, or maybe the whole server? Well, that is possible with this deal. It's called Backup Sheep, and it does exactly that. Now, something I want to point out with this deal is that it's a backup solution. It doesn't restore files, so just be aware of that. So that means that if you want to keep play it safe and you want to have backup of your sites, well, this is a great deal. I'm pretty happy with it and I'm excited with it because I'm glad that I have a backup and it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that I have a backup of my files. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to backup your WordPress site, your PHP site from cPanel, and I'm also going to show you how to connect Hetzner, which is a server, and also I'm going to show you how to connect from server avatar. So all of that, I'm gonna cover it in this video. So let's go jump over to my desktop right now. What's up everyone, my name is George and this is SaaS Master. The deal that I'm talking about is called Backup Sheep and it's $59 for the lifetime deal. Now there's two tiers for this type of deal and let me show you really quickly. You get access to the unlimited plan and the $59 deal gets you one terabyte of backup sheep storage, which is pretty good. Unless you have a whole bunch of files, then you might want to jump into the double stack, which is $118 for two terabytes of backup files. Um, you get unlimited nodes, unlimited offsite storage, unlimited schedules. And for example, if you have sites that don't weigh a lot, I mean, it's, I don't know, they're less than, 300 megabytes, one gigabyte, well, you're gonna be able to store a ton of backups with this. Plus, you can set the amount of storage that you want to keep. So for example, if you schedule backups for, I don't know, daily, you could tell it to say, hey, you know what? Only keep backups for 10 days. Well, no, the latest 10, day, 10 backups. So it'll start removing the, the backups from behind. So it's pretty cool and you save space with that sense because you don't want a really old backup, you want the recent backups. So it helps out. So let's get started with this because it might be a long video. This is my backup sheep um, dashboard and I've already connected my website, which is not a WordPress site, it's a PHP site and I'm glad that I have this backup options. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to backup any site on cPanel. It can be a WordPress site, a PHP site or whatever your site is, okay? So let's get started with this. To get started to add your backup, we're gonna head on over to integrations, okay? Now, for sites, there are two pieces of key information of a website. One is all the files, and the second one is the database. In the database, it's worth updating, it's where the passwords are stored, et cetera, and you need those two elements to complete a website, okay? So let's get started with the FTP, which is the first thing that we're going to integrate with. I've already opened up one of my panels right here, C panels, which is for testing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a website integration. I can set up via protocol FTP, SFTP, and FTPS. In this case for cPanel, you need FTP. I'm just going to name this test. The choose the endpoint, this is where you want to store your files. So you want it in North America or Europe. The cool thing about this is that when you schedule the backup, you can decide to uh, store it in like four places. I think they, they give you the option. So it's pretty safe to keep it in all those places. I'll just choose North America. And one thing that you're going to notice here is that it gives us an IP address. This is really important because if you do a lot of intensive backups, the cPanel might block it because it thinks it's leeching on your server. So you have to whitelist it in case you need it. Most cases you don't. For example, if I switch to Europe, it changes the IP address. So I'll keep it for North America. And the first thing that we're going to need is the host name or the IPv4. In this case, for cPanel, we are going to grab the shared hosting IP. This is a shared hosting cPanel I have for testing. So this is where you're going to grab it. Let's paste it here. The port that is usually used for this is 21. But again, if you don't know the port, you can contact your, obviously your, your hosting server provider and they'll provide you the port needed. Next thing we need is the username and password, okay? So let's head on over to FTP accounts, okay? So in this case, I'll just name this test and I'll select the domain that I want to back up in this case. It's this one right there. I'll create a simple password just for testing. There we go. And be aware here that the directory, you want to remove this, whoops, because you want access to the root of that particular domain. So you want those files to back up, okay? There we go, I'm gonna give it unlimited access. You can decide if you want to create a quota. 
Let's create the FTP account. There it is. This is going to be our username. So let's go back into our integration on Sheep. Next, we're gonna add the password that we've just created. So that was the one that I've just created. I already selected FTP and we should be good to go. Add integration. Let's read it, boom, it just added it, just like that, okay? So right now there's no backups going on. We've just created the connection, okay? We can modify this, we can validate it, we can copy, pause, or delete it. We want to create a node so we can start the backups, okay? So in this case, the first thing that it's gonna ask us is, what do we want to backup from that node? So for example, I will include all the files from that connection, and I can go to root, be aware that I, be aware that I cl clicked on root over here, okay? Because sometimes you have more files there and you can go back. In this case, I got all of them. I'll just name this test, no notes for this, and I'll create the node, okay? So I've just created the node. If I want to create a backup right now, I'll click on backup. If I want to create a schedule, which would be um, what we would all do, obviously, let's go click on create a schedule. I'll name this, I'll name this test. And then we have the settings for this. If you want to back up every minute, five minutes, et cetera, every day, we just click on that. Be aware, I'm going to give you a quick tip of how this works. So for example, for minutes, it's zero to 59. So you decide what minute you want to back up. For the hour, you decide what hour. For the day of the month, for example, um, I don't know, day three, it's going to do that back up on day three. If you only want to do it one time uh, a year, or if I said one, it's going to do it on January 1st, Third, no, January 3rd every year, okay? So in this case, we're gonna keep it like that. In this case, what I've just done is I've set it for day three, it's gonna do it every month and it's gonna back it up. Just quick tip there, okay? Number of backups for this to keep. So for example, I'll say five. When we hit five, it's gonna delete the first one and it's gonna come with the next ones, all right? This is really useful because Basically, not everyone is going to want a really old backup. You really want the most recent one, but just to keep it safe, just in case you took, I don't know, five months to realize that your site was bad, well, you have those backups there, okay? The time zone, I'll just choose anything for now, and the storage locations. So we, we can select where we want to store these backups. So for example, I want North America, Europe, and decentralized. So I can back up in all those places at once. And since I've connected my Google Drive, you can choose it if you like. In this case, I'll keep it here. So I'll create the schedule. There we go. The schedule has been created and it's gonna do its backup. Now, if you wanna get notified when it's successful, you can keep this on or turn it off. If you wanna get notified on failure, keep it on. If not, you can turn it off. Now, if you have a backup, I don't know, every two weeks, every month, well, you might wanna get notified. But if you're backing up two times a day, every day, it might get annoying to get those emails. So just be aware of that. So that's for the FTP part. We have the files for this site. It could be a WordPress site, a PHP site, etc. Now, what if we want, now we need the um, database, okay? So again, let's go back into integrations. Let's go into MySQL right here. So you have these options for databases and I'll click on it to integrate. Now again, let me go back into my C panel because this is the test that we're doing. Uh, be aware, this is super important. If you plan to back up on a shared hosting, a C panel, not all hosting providers give you access to remote MySQL. If it's not available, if you don't see it on cPanel, go ask your hosting provider if they can enable it, just in case you don't see it. I'll give you an example. I also have a shared hosting on Namecheap and they don't provide me access to remote MySQL. So be aware of that. Okay, so let's get started with the integration. Name this, call in a test, choose the endpoint. Um, you have these options, four of them. I'll choose North America. We're gonna need this IP address. In this case, we do need to white label it. And that is where remote MySQL comes in. So this is where we're going to add the IP address. So I'll add the host. There we go, it's been added, let's go back. Here it is, it's been added. So we need that for access to the database, that way it can connect, okay? So now we've added that IP address. Be aware that if I change the country, it's a different IP. So just be aware to add the correct one. Okay, so now we need the database information. In this case, I am going to create a brand new database. But if you want to grab a database from a website, obviously that you have live, you go into my databases, 
and this is where you're going to find it. You need to find out which one is tied to your domain. In this case, I'm gonna create a, a brand new one with database wizard. I'm gonna call it test. There we go. Oh, I already have one, so I'll test one. I'll create a simple password just for this video. Obviously, I will delete it later on. Let's go ahead and create the user, so it's test one. There we go. Let me get rid of that. We're gonna give it all privilege, privileges. Go next. There we go. This is my database name. And let's go into our settings. Database name. And we're gonna go to, it's a MySQL. In case it's MariaDB or Postgres SQL, you choose that one. In this case, it's MySQL. Um, you need to check out what MySQL version is. You have three of them, so don't worry about it. Just test the three and see which one is the one for you. 3306, it's a, it's a common port. If not, again, check with your hosting provider to see which one is the one you need. Database username, it's that one, the password that I've just created. And the host name, it's the IP address from the hosting cPanel right here. So here it is. Let's grab it, to creations, and we're good to go with those settings to connect. There we go, it's just been added. My, my SQL has been added again, just like the FTP, we are not backing up yet. We have just made the connection. So again, we need to create the same node, same process as we did before, but for the database. Okay, so there we go. No objects found on this database, obviously because it's a brand new one, it's clean. But we have to check all tables that you want to back up, name it, I'll say test, and create node. There we go. Again, we can back up now, create the schedule, notifications, same thing goes with that, okay? So that's for cPanel. That's how you're gonna back up the two necessary things for a complete website backup. That could be, like I mentioned before, it could be a WordPress site or a PHP site. Okay, next integration that I'm going to show you is the Hetzner one, okay? So you can integrate with these cloud providers, which they already have a direct connection, which you need an API or login information. But in this case, I'll show you for Hetzner. Let's jump in there. I already have one connected, but this is just a test account. So I'll click here, I'll just say test, choose the endpoint, again, I'll select Europe, and we're going to need the API key from Hetzner. So log into your Hetzner account, this is where I am, go into the cloud console, go in here, and on the left, we're gonna see security. Click on security, let's go into API tokens, and this is the API token that we're going to need. We can generate a new one, and we'll just say, for example, uh, backup, okay. Hey, can, do you want to give them read and write or just read? For example, I'll create both. I'll grab this and obviously I will delete it once I finish this video because I don't want to give you access to that. There you go. That's how easy you connect with Hessner. Again, you create the server node for this and the volume node. In this case, I don't have anything here. So there's no servers and there's no volumes for them to select, but it's super easy to integrate. Now, the other integration that I want to show you is server avatar, okay? So again, same type of integration. We are going to use both of these, FTP and MySQL. So let me go ahead and open up my server avatar account. Okay, so this is one of my VPS and server avatar. And what you're going to do is you're gonna need two things, application and database. So in applications, I'm going to open up one of the websites I have installed. So let me click on it. There we go, I opened up one of my applications and what you are going to need to integrate is the IP address the username, the password, and enable the port, which you're going to select 22. Again, like I mentioned before, for the FTP, this is the data that we're going to need. The IP address, the port, the username, and the password, which is available there. And be aware for server avatar is SFTP, not FTP. And that's how easy you get connected with it. For database, let me show you. Okay, I'm in the database section, and what I'm gonna do is open up one of the databases. So let's go into manage users. There we go, and we're inside of here. We're not going to use this one, okay? We need to create a brand new one. PHP admin, we're gonna create, okay? And in this case, we're gonna create a username, so I can say test at test, uh, set a random password, I'm going to delete it, and remote IP optional. So this is a really good option to add the IP. Remember, for the database, let's go back, MySQL, selected. When we choose the endpoint, we are gonna get an IP like this. So that's what we're gonna use right there. So I'll save it. There we go. It's just been added. So here's test test the username, the password, and the remote access that is going to give it over there. 
And that is how you're going to add your database here from server avatar. And last but not least, I'm going to show you how to connect your VPS. So the whole server is going to be backed up. It's not going to matter if the integration is available here, as long as we have access to the details for it. And we're going to use SSH for this. So let's click there. For example, I have a whole SSD node SAS VPS backed up from there. So let me show you like here again, same details, kind of like the FTP, but you're going to get that from your server. So let me go into my VPS account, one of them. Okay, this is one of my VPS, and if I want to back up the whole thing, I can do so with this information. So I have the primary IP, which is this one. The root is the username and the password. It's hidden, but you can put it over there, and you're good to go to install it over here. So you can have that backup done. Once you have access to the backup, it is recommended that you backup only the folders that you need, not the whole thing, because it could be a really huge file. So this is one of my connections. Let me create website node. And it's going to give me access to everything that I have inside of that VPS, including folders that I might not need. So it's important that you select the ones that you need. Okay. So there we go. It's been loaded. Now it's not showing you the whole thing. If I click on root, it's going to open up the whole thing. So the root, just be aware that sometimes it could get confusing thinking that, Hey, I didn't connect to the root and that's what I wanted. Just click on root and it'll take you to the section where you have all the files for the root folder. There we go. I have access to the whole thing. I can select what I want to include and not or not or back up everything. And just like that, I can set up my node and again, schedule the backups for my VPS. So all of that is possible with this deal. Like I mentioned, it gets me excited because it's something that I wanted because sometimes obviously if you have a WordPress site, you can install a plugin and you can back up. Hey, good to go, right? But if you have a PHP side, if you want to back up your VPS, it kind of gets a little bit more complicated. You have to use other services sometimes that are paid and you don't always get access to a service like this, which is paying once a lifetime for that amount of dollars, $59, which gives me a peace of mind to add a backup to my sites. It's pretty cool. Now, even if you already have another backup solution like Wasabi, AWS or whatever, having this as a second or third backup for that price, I don't know. There's not much to think about things that I would like for them to integrate is a direct integration to cPanel. So it's way easier to integrate just like we did with, for example, Hetzner, which all you needed is the API key and you're good to go to backup. I wish that was possible with backup sheep. So something really simple to backup in cPanel. So you don't have to go and create an FTP user, grab the data from the database, etc. But there you go. I hope this video was helpful. And if you guys want to grab that deal, there will be provided a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. So if you buy through that link, it helps me out with a small commission and it helps me make these videos for you guys. I thank you all for watching. My name is George. This is SaaS Master and I'll see you guys later.